In our last MF Corner episode, we spoke about ETFs. And in this episode, we are touching upon how many equity schemes you should have in your portfolio. At the start, let me tell you that there is no one answer to this question. So obviously, it will depend on individual investors and what they are looking for. It will depend on your life stage, on your risk taking capability, on your financial goals. But it is a question that needs to be addressed because many investors end up with 10 to 15 or more different equity mutual fund schemes in their portfolio um, over a period of, you know, five, six, seven years when they are investing. And hopefully you will not make the same mistake after listening to this video. So why is it important firstly to have different mutual fund schemes? Uh, in the equity space, I mentioned this, um, if you remember, in the MF Basics episode 3, where we were talking about how to choose an equity scheme, there are like some 300 different equity schemes out there. There are 10 different categories which are notified by the regulator. And from those, you have to select. So it gets difficult. Obviously, you want to have a different kind of scheme every time you invest. And, you know, it's tempting not to choose the best performer in every year. But that's not how we do things because then you just end up with a whole pile of schemes, over diversification and your returns will suffer. What we need to do uh, is be very selective about where we are investing and hold on to that investment for a long period of time. Uh, again, do refresh yourselves with the episode three of MF Basics right here on FIRE's YouTube channel where you will uh, figure out how to choose an equity mutual fund scheme from those 10 different categories notified by SEBI. Once you've done that, uh, then you have to sort of look at uh, what you need in your portfolio. So why do we invest in equity mutual fund schemes? To build long-term wealth, right? So you have to remain invested for like at least seven to 10 years. Now, uh, in that period of time, you will be tempted to buy a lot of different schemes, but you have to hold back. How do we know which scheme to invest in for a period of 10 years? Can you tell sitting now which will be the best performer, which will be the worst performer, and hence select the right fund and keep holding on to it? It's very difficult. What you have to do is select funds on the basis of their current portfolio, and of course, the track record of the fund manager who's managing that scheme. But you know what? Things do change in a long period of 10 years. Your fund manager could change or perhaps your fund house could be taken over by another. And due to some of these kind of risks involved, you have to diversify a little. So it's not like you choose one scheme and remain invested in that but spread your risk over a few different schemes. Now, let's see how to do that. See, every equity mutual fund scheme will have roughly about 40 to 60 different stocks. So you are getting exposure to a lot of stocks, but within the same category, especially your large cap, multi cap and large and mid cap categories, there will be a fair amount of overlap among stocks. In fact, in these categories, if you see the top five or 10 stocks, uh, you will most likely find names like Infosys, HDFC Bank, Bharti Airtel, Bajaj Finance in at least 80% of the schemes. So now if you buy, you know, say four different schemes or five different schemes from the large cap, large and mid cap category, you will just keep adding exposure to the same stocks. You're not really diversifying well and that is why you need to limit the number of schemes that you include in your portfolio now how can we do this so let's take it uh, like i said it will be different for different people but on a broad basis uh, there should not be more than three or four categories that you invest in from those 10 categories and within each category don't invest in more than two or three schemes how do we know this so look at the large cap category first, because if you're just starting out as an investor, that is a category that will uh, be a good start for you. So when you look at the large cap category, there are very few stocks which fall within that uh, segment, okay, large cap stocks. 
and most of the large cap mutual funds are benchmarked to either the Nifty 50 or the Sensex 30. So the benchmark uh, for most of these schemes is the same and the number of stocks in the benchmark is also limited. So you know that the kind of stocks that you find in these uh, large cap schemes will be quite similar. So it's really best to have one at the most two large cap schemes because there will not be too much differentiation if you have uh, say four or five different large cap schemes, you pretty much have the same number, same kind of stocks in both. Now when you look at the mid cap uh, schemes or even the multi cap schemes, there could be enough differentiation in two different portfolios. In fact, in mid good quality mid cap schemes, you will find that portfolios can be entirely different from another good quality scheme. So look for schemes in the mid cap space where uh, mid cap allocation is actually high and look for schemes which have least overlapping portfolios and then include two or at the most three schemes. If you have too many schemes, say in three schemes, you already have like, I don't know, 200 plus different mid cap stocks. Do we need more? Not really, because any change in these stocks then will not have an impact on your overall portfolio. So you have to stop. See, if you take, uh, you know, if you take something and divide it into too many small parts, each moving part will not have as much impact on your return, right? So you have to divide it up into just enough moving parts so that the return is impacted when things change within that, right? So uh, don't load on too much. So two to three different mid cap schemes, one or two large cap schemes. And then let's come to the other category, which is small cap. Now small cap is a risky category. Uh, define how much you actually want to own in the small cap category and then restrict it to one or two different schemes, that's it. Do not add too much small cap because that will also add a lot of risk to your portfolio, which you may not be keen on. Tax saving mutual fund schemes. Now those really are like multi-cap schemes, diversified equity schemes. And if you are investing in uh, equity mutual funds through tax saving schemes, then remember you don't need to add up a lot on the large cap and the large and mid cap category otherwise because it is being taken care of by your tax saving schemes otherwise you'll end up duplicating right so if you have tax saving schemes or ELSS schemes in your portfolio uh, then have maximum of two and then don't add up a lot of large and mid cap schemes or large cap schemes mid cap schemes go for two or three at the most pure large cap schemes go for one or two and small cap schemes also go for one or two so from the basket of diversified equity funds, you will find that you don't need anything more than six or seven schemes, which we have defined uh, in the way that we did. Start with this. There are other categories. Why are they there? Because, you know, some investors do find value in things like sector funds and thematic funds. Uh, but in a long period of time, unless you're very sure of the sectoral um, kind of exposure that you're taking or the thematic exposure you're taking, it turns out to be more risky than beneficial. Uh, so it's avoidable, especially if you're just starting out in your mutual fund journey. Remember, do not overload on equity schemes. Having 10 to 15 adds nothing to your portfolio. Stick, stick to six or seven different equity schemes and within each category, not more than two or three. I hope this was useful for you. Do keep tuning in to MF Corner for more such uh, discussions on mutual fund concepts. And do write in to us if you want to know anything specific about your mutual funds. Thank you for watching. I'm Lisa.